Hello indie game fans, Metroidvanias, Roguelite, Tunde's titles and more in this edition of upcoming indie games, so let's begin with Geno Panic, a self-styled pixel art Metroidvania inspired adventure platformer, so it might not exactly be a pure Metroidvania in that sense, but it follows a long lineage of such Metroid-liked games such as Environmental Station Alpha and Zero Drifter and does look pretty neat. I'm a fan of the pixel art of course, but the news is that this got a release date for October so look out for it next month. I largely compiled this list from Twitter, so if you're an indie developer, do follow me there, with South Pole Bebop getting my attention due to its uncanny resemblance to Into the Breach. I think it's fairly obvious where they got their inspiration from, even down to the 8x8 grid, but where you're controlling adorable animals instead. In addition, this is a PvPvE title in which you're defending your bases and fighting off another player, but there are also zombies that will spawn in, so there is variety, with the telegraphed attacks present in this title as well, and does look kind of neat. This video is brought to you by Run From Mummies, an Egyptian-themed action-adventure game in which a bunch of modern-day tourists go on the adventure of a lifetime on a holiday that they won't soon forget. An ancient temple has been uncovered and our unlikely band of characters hop on the bus to go see it in hopes of taking pictures, unearthing ancient relics and discovering forgotten secrets. Of course, the mummies in the tomb would not be too happy about it, which is why you have your trusty camera to stun them while you navigate your way past deadly traps and hope to get out alive. There are multiple playable characters, each with different special abilities like the ability to break pots or to interview a mummy which locks them in place, as well as special cameras for each character which all behave differently such as a camera turret for example, and where this also supports 4 player co-op to share the fun. In addition to this temple featured prominently in the trailer, the developers have planned for 6 regions, each with 20 levels and a boss fight, including an ancient capital city, a rugged fortress and even the seemingly endless desert. So there does appear to be plenty of variety. This game is currently on Kickstarter seeking funding with less than 15% left to go to hit their target. So if interested, check out their free demo on Steam and support this developer on Kickstarter. I've been waiting for a trailer to show off this title since Folly of the Wizards is a hand-drawn roguelite platformer with a little bit of a Hollow Knight vibe and is supposed to be a comedic title as well. You know the drill by now, venture into procedurally generated levels and battle a bunch of enemies with the ranged weapon options and spells resembling Noita as well, which as a side note, you'll see another such inspired game later on in this video. <laughs> There will be meta progression in the form of gradually learning and deciphering the magical runes on scrolls which unlock more powerful spells and abilities, so roguelike fans, be sure to put this on your wishlist. Speaking of Hollow Knight, one look at Aesthetic, and you can clearly see the influence, so much so that I had to warn the developers that they will get clone accusations, to which they replied that they already have. However, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now, since nobody has copyright on the hand-drawn art style, and the far-ranging success of Hollow Knight has inspired many indie developers. There's corruption spreading in the world that makes sane creatures insane, and where the developers talk about making choices that impact the course of the game in a meaningful way, so that could be something interesting. I don't envy developers in this position since it's tough to stand out, so if curious, perhaps give this game a chance as well. One thing about Dreadstone Keep that caught my eye is the transitions, reminding me of old school isometric PC games when the character moves from one room to the next. It is a classically designed turn based roguelike, but with individual rooms, 
having the stereotypical story set up of having to enter an ancient castle to defeat a boss, but the twist is that there are two powerful entities instead of one. The minimalist pixel art sprites are okay, but does have a decidedly old school feel to the game which I do appreciate. Some news here as well since the highly anticipated CRPG Broken Roads also got a release date and is unique since it is set in post-apocalyptic Australia which is not something you see every day and does come to us from an Aussie developer no less. I've long had this title on my watch list due to their moral compass system which is not just the simple paragon renegade split that you see in other games so I'd be interested to see how it compares with the thought cabinet system of Disco Elysium but Fallout in the Outback seems like a pretty neat idea. Here's another Metroidvania of note in Kingdom Shell, a title that I've been covering for quite a while now in my Metroidvania preview videos and it has a release date which is very soon indeed. The game appears to have undergone some slight visual tweaks since we last took a look, for the better might I add, and it's a gorgeous pixel art title to feast your eyes on. It is set in a world where the magical shell protecting the kingdom has been shattered and now nightmarish creatures are pouring in so the kingdom turns to the unlikeliest of heroes, a half-blood with nightmare blood running through his veins in order to save the day. The melee focused combat looks like a challenge with some epic looking monstrous boss fights as well so fans of the genre be sure not to miss this one. Take control of a trusted soldier tasked with a perilous mission and given the magical gauntlet Demon Claw. This next title is already successfully funded on Kickstarter, but you know me, of course I have to give this pixel art title a shout out, and more interestingly, where Demon Claw is being made for modern platforms, the Mega Drive, and the new Geo of all things. It is an arcade style side scrolling action platformer that looks cool, with the titular Demon Claw giving you variety in attacks and abilities. The cool part of this Kickstarter is that they are actually making physical cartridges for those old consoles. So if you love those platforms which remind you of a simpler time, check out the campaign for stretch goals and rewards. The developer of this game called upon heroes of might and magic, so of course I'm in, with Mystical Conquests being a turn-based strategy RPG with wonderful minimalist pixel art sprites. This is something that I've seen developers increasingly use, from Heroes Hour to Super Fantasy Kingdom, so it has not gotten old just yet, but might be getting there. But it is chosen because it looks great in my opinion. You are leading a band of survivors as they seek to fight back against the forces of the Dark Lord in order to save the world, taking part in turn-based tactical combat on a hex grid in order to do so. There's a base building and kingdom management aspect, which is a little like Songs of Conquest in which you're building outwards from a central castle in order to build farms and mines to get resources which are then used to hire more troops, so as a sucker for all things HOMM, I'm certainly down for this. The developer of this game described it as Slay the Spire meets Noita, so if you ever thought roguelite deck builders were boring, perhaps Infest will change your mind. Yes, you're playing cards in order to attack enemies, but things like positioning, elevation and physics simulation of the particles are in effect and does look kind of awesome, so do check out the demo if you're curious with a look at the best looking pixel art titles in this video. 